Smith that's there. Um, I feel like that it, you know, that's at the ECW. Shane Helms is now in ECW. Uh, Ezekiel Jackson is in ECW. Zach Ryder is in ECW. Um, um, did someone forget that's only an hour show? I mean, what's going to happen to the Evan Bournes uh, of the world? And and that's where you got to see yourself and say, well, probably goodbye to Zach Ryder. I mean, I think the reality is um, he's probably, you know, one foot out the door. You know, what are you going to do with Vladimir? Well, he'd probably run a program in ECW, and if that fails, then he may fail. You know, but you, you're you throwing in, like, five talent names into ECW in an hour show. You don't want to take away from that initiative that they've always talked about, bringing new talent in. Ricky Ortiz leaves ECW, and that goes to SmackDown. Gives them a, a little bit of a better platform to kind of perform. Same thing with Dolph Ziggler. Raw, raw, goes from Raw to SmackDown. So Charlie Haas uh, to, to to SmackDown from Raw. So he, he, you know, he and the Bella Twins now from SmackDown to Raw. So overall, I kind of like the way the draft kind of ended up with. But the reality is, 80% of this talent that we see being drafted would be lucky if we see them once or twice on TV. And that's just based on history. Oh, yeah, that's very true. I mean, a lot of times the guys that get drafted, you know, you won't even see them. D.A. Smith, uh, two years in a row, is a classic example. Well, last year and this year, you know what I mean? We'll see if they, they use them. Uh, I don't see why we wouldn't see them over on ECW. I think they're going to do that new Heart Foundation thing. And then if that takes off, you know, they can always bring those guys over to Raw, too. You know what I mean, at some point. And then those plans for D.A. Smith and the Legacy would be scrapped, you know what I mean? So we'll have to wait and, uh, wait and see you know, what they do over on ECW. The, I read the spoilers tonight, and there was no uh, there was no tease or anything like that of a, of a heart, heart foundation. No D.A. Smith either. Not yet. They may uh, they may save that until they get back in the States. Um, well, you got a couple of, of, of the new ECW arrivals as well. That's kind of like, you know, ahead yeah. of them. So it, it doesn't okay. – same thing with, you know, some of those SmackDown guys that are that are joining. But what, what really gets me is Hornswoggle to Raw. I mean <laughs> – yeah, well, I don't, I don't know about it. with that move, with that mute move. I don't know about his future. You know what I mean? I mean, what are they, what are they going to do with him? You know what I mean? Maybe they want Finley on his own. You know, you take Finley, you put him on his own, and then maybe it's just a way to cut somebody that. I mean, he'll be used in roles, you know, here and there roles, but not anything permanent. I think his his days may be numbered, as may some other people that were drafted, like you said, that may not. Never be seen again after being drafted. Spring's coming up. Spring cleaning's coming up. So in the next the next few weeks here, you'll probably get rid of, you know, the normal 10 or 15 that they do every year. I'm sure that's coming up, man. It happens every year after the uh, after the WWE draft. I'm sure we'll start to see the pretty big releases here. Hey, before we get into the backlash card uh, this Sunday, let's talk about the uh, the big news that broke here over the last few days. Um, Jeff Hardy has turned down numerous contracts, at least two contract offers from WWE in recent months. Um, Hardy issued a statement that said, it's all rumor. We just put it up before we came on the air tonight. It's all a rumor right now. Basically, people are saying that the guy's burned out. He just wants some time off. TNA people said that they've had no talks with him at all. And, um... You know, an interesting note is WWE offered him a one-year deal to basically come back. You work one year, if it doesn't work out, you go about your ways. And that's not the norm. They've uh, they've been trying to lock guys down for at least three years. They tried to get Ray for five years, and Ray said he only wanted three. Some of these guys they have for ten years. The big show, uh, his contract before he returned was a ten-year deal they had him under. So to offer a one-year deal is not something that this company does a lot. It's usually at least a three-year deal, and that's basically only for your top stars, your top top talent that gets offered three-year deals, and then uh, your mid-carders are, are five- to ten-year deals. So to be able to offer Jeff Hardy a one-year deal, I mean, they want him to stay. You obviously know they want him to stay. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, you know, maybe they do the match this Sunday at Backlist, the I Quit match, and then... They say, you know what, Jeff, go home for a few weeks, you know, rest up, and then come back and try to rejuvenate him, you know what I mean, and try to get him to stick around. And it would make perfect sense to do it in an I Quit match. But that's the basic gist of it 
right now with uh, with Jeff Hardy and WWE. They've offered him at least two contract offers, and he's turned them both down. Down one of those contract offers was a one year deal, which is uh, not the standard within WWE. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting what you know if the WWE is put into a position where if he doesn't want to resign, I mean, you start questioning what what's you know just motivation behind it. Granted, the dude needs a break. I mean, he goes out there and gives it 150 percent, and the reality is he is still one of the highest gross merchandise seller that's you know for the company, and he was the highest uh, when he was in TNA. So they they know right there and then that there's an investment uh, within Matt Hardy or I'm sorry Jeff Hardy's uh, brand name, and it's important for them to continue u- utilizing it, even if it's you know wrestle a spot here and there or work a storyline or you know my guess is if he's gonna take a break he's gonna take a break. I don't think he'll well, be on TV and you know making spots here and there. If he's gonna go he's gonna go away for a little bit. Well, the guy went out at WrestleMania, had an Extreme Rules match, then came back two days later at the SmackDown tapings and worked an unbelievable stretcher match on uh, SmackDown that I was uh, fortunate enough to be able to see. And then he comes back and he's got an I Quit match at Backlash. You know what I mean? They're working this guy. I know it's with Matt Hardy and that. but uh, And not only that, but he worked all house shows all house shows, I mean, every single weekend, you know what I mean? And it's probably just burnt out, you know, when he left last time, there was, you know, you you hope that, you know, if he's burnt out, and he, you hope that he still has good people around him if he leaves the business right now, you know what I mean? Because right now he travels with his brother, and, or used to, or uh, not actually would be able to right now, because uh, Matt's coming to Raw. Uh, no, 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 they won't, they won't, they won't, not anymore, because, uh, who is it? Jeff's over on SmackDown, and Matt's coming to Raw. So no more with that, and we'll have to wait and see. You know, hopefully he's got good people around him that'll 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 tell him good things. You know what I mean? So he doesn't go back to where he was. You know what I'm talking about? No, I know exactly what you mean. It, the, the reality is, it's he's he's surrounded by good company, and the the notion behind it is, and, and the understanding backstage is that. He has uh, turn on, you know, turn over a new leaf, and and you know he doesn't need to take a step back uh, in order to uh, take two steps forward because he's already doing those, you know, four steps. Yeah, yeah, and there were problems before, you know what I mean, and now he's all cleaned up, and uh, hopefully it works out, man. Hopefully they can they can lock him down. I mean, he's the most he's the most over guy on SmackDown right now, besides uh, besides Taker. You know what I mean? I mean, who else is more over than Jeff Hardy right now on SmackDown as a face? Yeah, I, I mean, I, what's that? I said I couldn't even tell you. I couldn't even think of a name that. Ah, I mean, it'd be the Undertaker. The Undertaker would be the only oh, yeah. guy that would be that would be above him. But Jeff Hardy would be right there as uh, as the number one, number two babyface over on SmackDown. So that was the uh, that was the big Jeff Hardy news. I got an exclusive for you here on uh, WZR Radio. You know who was uh, backstage? And I haven't put this on the website. I'm gonna do it. Uh, after we go off the air here, I was going to break it here first for you tonight. But uh, you know who was backstage at lockdown? It was Gene Snitsky. Um, I don't think there was any. I don't think there was any sort of uh, any sort of deal signed with him or anything like that. I think he was just there visiting. I know he lives down in uh, down near Philly, somewhere in, somewhere in Pennsylvania. I'm not exactly sure. Somebody sent me his address one time. It was like on a map. Guy said he lived down the street or something like that. Sent me a picture and a and a photo of the house and the address. Okay, buddy, but uh, somewhere in Pennsylvania, <laughs> down in, uh, down there. So I think he was just backstage visiting at uh, at lockdown. So there's an exclusive for you. TNA Impact Spoilers. We're gonna have them up on TNAWrestlingNews.com uh, as soon as we go off the air. They're taking one and a half weeks tonight. One and a half weeks tomorrow night. SmackDown and ECW spoilers, like we said earlier, are already on the main website. Let's talk about backlash, Jose. This Sunday night pay per view. What we got, man? We got a main event of Triple H, Batiste, and Shane McMahon versus The Legacy, Randy Orton, Ted DiBiase, and Cody Rhodes. It's going to be an interesting main event. Um, you know, there, there, there has to be something that has to come out of this. I mean, right now, they, they've been running a program for almost two months. You know, again, Orton gets over on TV, H gets over on pay-per-view. I don't see H losing the title, again, taking it on to a triple you know, dance uh, on the next pay-per-view. Uh, but I still don't see a heel turn either. I mean, I, I think that it would be nice to see Batista as a heel 
Um, but I think they're still pushing Randy Orton as the biggest heel. I think it, it may feel it take it may take away a little bit of the heel from Randy Orton if uh, Batista turns. I think they're going to play the role of I hate you, I hate you, I hate you between H and and Batista, but I respect you. I'm still going to be a face, but I still hate you. I think that's kind of like the 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 the, the creative idea that they might come out with. But I don't see him turning like a full fledged heel. You know? You know, now that I look at it, I say, you know, you've got Ted DiBiase Jr., who's going to be 